Thank you, and good afternoon. My name is Dewan Nelson, and I will be your moderator for this class. Welcome to another lecture given by the members of Southfield Michigan class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing the proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Southfield Michigan class was established in 1997. The Dean of the Southfield Michigan class is Dr. Marvin Lewis and the president is Dr. Edward Ewell. In this school, we use the true, correct and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text the true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that they are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in the alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. 
Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round bout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In the school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find, know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction or race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose throughout the, excuse me, through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which is once delivered to the sons of the children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men where man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan, speak the truth. At this time, we will have a prayer by uh, Dr. Rhonda Walker. She's followed by, she left it. She's oh, I'm sure sorry, she you're right, it. you're right, I'm sorry. We'll have uh, a prayer by Dr. Ron Atkins followed by scripture lesson um, by Dr. Rhonda Walker. I don't have the scripture here. He, Hebrews, the first chapter. Hebrews, the first chapter. Hello, class. May we bow our hearts and minds in a moment of prayer. Oh, gracious and merciful Father Yahweh, we thank you once again, whereby we can meet with this passion. We ask you, Father, that you continue to protect us throughout this pandemic which seems to be even getting worse in, in this uh, state. Father, we thank you so much for our brother and savior, Yahshua. We thank you for your mercy. We ask that you continue to protect us. Father, we ask these many blessings and prayers in your son, Yahshua, the Messiah's name. Let us all say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. Walker. Okay, can you all hear me fine? Yes. Okay, perfect. All right, I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible. Um, that's going to be Hebrews, the first chapter. <clears throat> Elohim, who at sundry times and in various manners spake in times past, unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir, heir of all things, 
by whom also he hath ordained the ages, who being the brightness of his glory and the exact impress of his substance and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he had be as he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of El worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the son, he said, thy throne, O Elohim, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, Elohim, even thy Elohim, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Yahweh, in the beginning, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and, hath, and the heavens are the work of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old and doth a gar as, as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years have no end. But to which of the angels said, He at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? That was Hebrews chapter 1. Thank you, Dr. Walker. And also, uh, thank you, Dr. Atkins, uh, for the beautiful prayer. As a reminder, we want to remind all of our uh, class participants to make sure that your cameras are off and mics are muted uh, until after the class or until you call on. We'll be calling from the participants in the class today. Uh, if you are unable to speak, uh, just stay muted or say so. Give me one second here. And it's my pleasure today to call on our first speaker, Dr. Vicki Ketchum. Dr. Ketchum. Dr. Ketchum is still on mute. All right. It is with pleasure to call on from our sophomore class, Dr. Felicia Hamilton. Dr. Hamilton. Excuse me. Good afternoon, class. And I'll uh, see Good if afternoon. Home, Yahweh allows me to, to last, but um, I am very grateful to be here. Um, I was just thinking while he was doing the moderation, just listening to it, actually listening to it and not, you know, being on my phone or being distracted. And I thought about um, how, I hate to use the word, but I have to use it, how blessed we are to know what we know because just in the moderation itself, people would give their life to know the things in that moderation that we not only hear every time we come to class, but that we know for surety are true. So, um, you know, the moderator said this, a man had a divine vision and revelation. Now, in our when we first hear that, you know, we tell people, yeah, Dr. Kinley had a divine vision and revelation. And I remember when I would tell people about this gospel, I would say he claimed to have had. Um, but once I really, really got to know and Yahweh allowed me to study and be um, obedient to what he told me to do, 
then I knew it wasn't a claim, it was true. That man saw something. Yahweh showed him something. And then he not only showed him something, he allowed us, he allowed him to share it with us, to share it with his children. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm very, very grateful uh, for that. Now that I know for sure that he had a divine vision and revelation, now when I talk to people, I tell them, I know it for a fact, but you have to come to know it yourself. So until you do, you can say, claim to have had, but once the evidence and proof has been shown to you, then you don't have any excuse where you don't already, as it says in Romans. Um, actually, go ahead and get that Romans, the first chapter, and start at one. Um, because Paul tells us we don't have an excuse because of the way we're made. But um, if you look at this chart that she's showing now, um, this is a school, it's not a church. I, I like to say that because everything that's going on in the world, people are falling out of their religious affiliations. Well, this is not a religion. I was listening to a class the other night and a person said, we're not like any other religion. We're not a religion. This is not a religion. This is a school. It's a school of what we say is the highest learning. And in this school, what we've been taught from the very beginning is to research everything, not just things you don't believe, maybe because I said it, because you don't want to believe what I say, but even research things you think of someone else said that you trust very much. So, you know, if your mother came to you and said something, you don't just believe it because she's your mother, you get the proof and the evidence because your soul is at stake when it comes to this gospel. So it's okay to question, it's, it's okay to research. Even when you think about this virus, I, was, um, I like to listen to podcasts by uh, scientists and um, scientific community. So I was listening to this one and they were talking about this virus and how some people have what's called long hauler syndrome. Well, what they pointed out is that's not, that's not exclusive to this virus. Every Every disease you have has a lasting effect. It's just that with COVID, because so many people have it, now it's being brought out. And the things they went into, what it did was made me thankful to Yahweh that I research everything. I don't just look at the news or go on Facebook and see a story and think, oh my goodness, see, I knew it was this, I knew it was that. Because the most trusted people you think are the most trusted people can get that story and they they got it from someone else and they got it from someone else. I remember Dr. Janice Welsh of Lansing said that it was either her or uh, someone from Oceanside said they posted something on Facebook and they regretted it because they found out it wasn't even true. I said, yeah, so you can't even, don't take anything for granted people. That's what I'm saying. I don't care what source you get it from, you research it. That's what this is. It's a research organization. So don't be lazy, check it out, find out the facts before you make an opinion and stand on it. And then you come to find out it's not right. And that's mm -hmm. what Yahweh showed us with this vision. And that's what I'm so grateful because I don't have to take anybody's word for anything. I can question, that's my, that's my right to question and to get, get proof and to ask for evidence. And what Yahshua the Messiah did with his, <clears throat> with his disciples he went back to the law and the prophets and proved to them everything he was saying. See, even Yahshua says it's okay to ask and to get some proof. So go ahead and, and start with Romans, the first chapter for me. Because remember, like I said, once Yahweh has shown you the proof of something, then you have no excuse for your ignorance. Once he's shown you that his name is Yahweh and there wasn't a J, there's no excuse for calling him Jesus or Jehovah. So go ahead and start with uh, John, I mean, sorry, Romans, uh, first chapter. That's, That's Romans. <clears throat> That's Romans 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, a servant of Yahshua, the Messiah, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of Yahweh. So he was called he and he was separated. That's what Yahweh does with us. He separates us from the world. Yes, we're in it. We still live it. You know, we have to deal with the things in it, but in our hearts and minds, we're separated. We're already in the kingdom. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures mm -hmm. concerning his son, Yahshua the Messiah and our Savior, which was made of the seed of David, David according to the flesh. 
mm-hmm. and declared to be the son of Yahweh with power, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, right. by, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. We, we, we receive that grace and apostleship. So that apostleship, that, that's not just something you're given just because Yahweh gave you that. And he does it, he does it through grace. And how did he do it? Read that over for me, Dr. Lewis. Mm-hmm. Fifth verse, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. So we are obedient and we have and we are obedient to the faith and his name. We 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 know his name, we've kept his name, we're obedient to what he told us about his name. We're not switching back to, to a man and saying this is who saved us. So because of that, Yahweh is giving, Yahweh is, is granting you mercy. And because of that mercy, then you have an obligation to learn about him, to learn more of him. Go ahead. Among whom are, excuse me, whom are ye also the call of Joshua? <clears throat> to all that be in Rome, beloved of Yahweh, called to be sons, grace to you and peace from Yahweh our Father and from the Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Now she's ringing out, she's reading out of the King James Version. So that actually said called to be saints. And every time I see that now, I think of that Dr. Kelly lecture where he <laughs> talks about that. And she's laughing because she knows which one I'm talking about. But he said, who saved you, St. Jesus? Like, no, we, <laughs> we, there were no saints. We're sons. And she probably right. put the right word there. We're sons of Yahweh Elohim. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. First, I thank my Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. And now that's what our faith is spoken of through this Zoom and YouTube. This gospel Mm -hmm. is being heard all around the world. Go ahead. For Yahweh is my witness, Mm -hmm. whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making requests that by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of Yahweh to come unto you. Mm -hmm. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. And this faith is comforting. And and Mm -hmm. that's why I like to come to class because it's comforting Mm -hmm. to know that there are other sons out there that are going through what I'm going through. There are other sons out there that are grieving sometimes in their spirit and need this soul food to get us through the day. That comforts me. That gives me so much peace to know I'm not dealing with this crap by myself, that there are sons out there and they understand. We may not even talk, But once we get in the class, you can feel it. You know that we're all going through it, but it's this gospel that unites us and joins us. And that's why I love what he said. He said, I pray for, I'm always praying for you. And that's always my prayer. Yahweh, protect your sons, protect the body of Yahshua while we're in this flesh. I don't just pray for me or my children. I'm like, protect the body because you guys are all the family I have. And I don't want to see anything happen to any of you, but more importantly, I want your soul to be maintained in Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what Paul is saying. Go ahead, keep reading. Mm -hmm. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come (laughs) unto you, but was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Gentile, and excuse me, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. So he's a debtor to everyone. What he's saying mm-hmm. is he has to preach this gospel to everyone that Yahweh gives him to preach it to. He can't be looking at who they are and say, well, I'm not going to tell you. That's not, that's what um, uh, Jonah did. So Yahweh's not having that. You preach it to whomever and I will decide who's going to receive it and who's not. Go ahead. Both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first 
and also to the Greek. And see now, you know, if, I think it's First Corinthians 15 and 1, it talks about to everyone that believeth, believe what? Believe the gospel. And that tells mm -hmm. you what the gospel is. But see, he's not ashamed. We're not ashamed. We may have been at one time and that was okay. That's part of the growth process of Yahweh bringing you up in this gospel. He had to make your foundation sure. And once he shored up your foundation, you go boldly into this world preaching the gospel of Yahshua and letting people know, no, his name is not Jesus. And that's what he's saying. He's not ashamed of it. Why? Because at the end of the day, we're all, we all got to take this flesh off. So you either want to spend a little bit of time here trying to please men, or you want to be eternal with eternity within Yahshua the Messiah. So keep reading. I think you're at 17. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed mm -hmm. from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all unholiness, excuse me, against all unpiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So we don't have to be, and I, I, I have to admit, I get upset sometimes when I see these politicians and everything that's going on. And, you know, you hear people make comments about Black Lives Matter. And even us in this school, even though we're in class, we're still a lot of us, uh, those of us that are, we are African-American or Black. So we still have to deal with the, the prejudice and racial stuff that's going on. It's not that we're immune from it. We still deal with it. I deal with it all the time, you know, just being a Black woman. But what, what he's saying is, you know, Yahweh is going to get his, his um, uh, what is this? All right. Yahweh is going to be revealed from heaven against all unpiety and unrighteousness. Yahweh is going to deal with that. But what we do while we're in this flesh, while we're dealing with it, because we have to deal with it, we just give it to Yahshua. Yes, it's, it's unsettling. It's, I, sometimes I see the news and I just get so ticked off. I'm like, why us, Yahweh? Why, 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 why? But then Yahweh calms me down. He centers me and he tells me he has this. Don't you worry about that. I got it. So that's, that's the scripture with don't let the sun go down on your anger. That's what it's talking about. Not, you know, being mad at your spouse and going to bed angry. It's about not letting the things of this world get to you to the point where it disrupts you and takes your focus off Yahshua. Focus on Yahshua. You can be angry, but focus on Yahshua and he'll take that anger away. So start 18 again for me, Dr. Lewis. Mm -hmm. For the wrath of Yahweh is revealed from heaven against all unpiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. So what but 19 is saying, because we always start in 19, but mm -hmm. 19 starts with because. You don't start a sentence with because. So why is he saying because? He's right. saying Yahweh is, and if you read 18, he's saying Yahweh will have be revealed from heaven against all that unrighteousness because... That which can be known of Yahweh is already manifest in us. So what right. Yahweh is saying is there's no excuse for your ignorance. Right. Sun comes up every day and it goes down. That's a death, burial, resurrection. That points you to the, to the Holy Spirit. You turn around and you breathe the name of Yahweh every day. That's your witness. And so Yahweh is telling us <coughs> that there is no excuse. So start um, 18 over, Dr. Lewis, and I won't interrupt you. Okay. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Okay, you can stop right there. So mm -hmm. I, I got that because I was talking about how Yahweh gives us proof and evidence. He created an entire creation for us to know him. And what we're doing now in these classes, and I'm so happy about it, is what we're doing is we're going, and if someone, one of the scripture readers can find the scripture where Yahweh says, beginning at, Yahshua says, beginning at Moses. So now in all these classes, what we're doing is we're going back to the law and the prophets or the so-called Old Testament, and we're proving that Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus, was actually in that, um, in the law and the prophets, and he was, he, what he did when he came in the flesh was fulfilling everything that was in that, in those books. So that's what we're, it seems like everybody is focusing on now. And I'm so grateful for that because I'm hearing things. I, 
I have never heard before, but I, I research them, but I look it up and it's like, wow, Yahweh, you are just awesome. You did all this for us. So this is a school, like I said before, it's not a church. I'm going to briefly have the, um, the host pull up the name chart. I'm going to go on the name briefly, but I'm not going to stay there because we know this is a well-known fact. It's easy to look up. Google is a, a noun and a verb now. Just Google it. You can figure out that the name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It is not Lord. It's not Jehovah. It's Yahweh. And it's not Lord or Jehovah because Lord is not a name. It's a title. And Jehovah has a J in it. And there was no J in the Hebrew language when Yahweh gave Moses his name. So Yahweh is not going to give Moses a name that he can't pronounce. So there was no J. So it's the, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. The name of the word or son is Elohim. That's a title that Yahweh gave him to himself. And then, and that title means he who causes to exist. And then the name of the son or the Holy Spirit in a body, in or out of a physical body, is Yahshua, the Messiah. And that means, all that means is Yahweh is salvation. These three are one. You see on the bottom of that chart, Yahweh started off in pure spirit. And I hate to even say started off because there's no starter into Yahweh. So Yahweh is pure spirit. He's always been pure spirit. That's what he is. That's his substance, his source, his essence, pure spirit. And then to, because he knew the creatures he created couldn't understand him in that pure spirit state, then he moved into a a intangible shape and form of a man. And that's, that's that form of Elohim right there, number two. That form can only be seen in, in visions and revelations. But because he needed to fulfill, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the things in the Old Testament or the law and the prophets, he had to move into a physical body to fulfill those things. So now you have Yahshua, the Messiah, which is nothing but Yahweh himself in the physical form, in a physical form, fulfilling the things of the scriptures. And one of the things I love is the um, story of Mary and Elizabeth when they met. And I said, um, and I thought to myself, I'm like, well, Yahweh, how did you've been, yeah, Yahshua the Messiah started fulfilling the time he got in Mary's womb. And he, the time he was placed in Mary's womb. And when you think of that story of Mary and Elizabeth meeting and saluting each other, they formed an ark. And it says when they saluted each other, the babe in Elizabeth's womb, who, was, who ended up being John, he leapt, which means the Holy Spirit went from Mary's womb to Elizabeth's womb. So you actually have that spirit between them, which fulfills that ark, which is the ark of the covenant. And I'm like, you know what, Yahweh, you just... You know, was that drop the mic? Just it's nothing you can do with that. So what we're telling you is this: Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one. It's just your heavenly Father taking on a physical shape and form to fulfill everything in the law and the prophets, so that you uh, don't have to worry about trying to do it. So now let's go to the Moses chart. I'm gonna just pick up, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of things so that you you can see that. Yahshua the Messiah himself was fulfilling all those things. And if one of the scripture readers has that scripture, they can read it. Yes, that's Luke 24 and 27. <clears throat> and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Okay, Dr. Nelson. Now remember, we're, this is a school. So I want you to start up because I don't want to start a sentence with and. And some is hard because some of these chapters, every, every verse starts with and. So see if you can pick it up and give us a train of thought. That was 25. Okay. Then he said unto them. Okay, stop. <laughs> go further up. Yes, because who is okay. this, this and who is he talking to? <laughs> All right, then I will say, it. I will start it. Um, uh, and if 13, it's too far 13. up, we can, okay, go ahead. 13? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. That's Luke 24 and 13. Mm -hmm. And behold, two of them went that same day into the village called Emmaus, mm -hmm. which was from Jerusalem, about three score furloughs. Mm -hmm. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So, it, so pause for me right there, Dr. Nelson. Um, uh, Dr. Lewis, go ahead and get the Moses chart for me. So 
or actually if you can get the uh, elementary chart. So what she's talking about, this is after Yahshua has been crucified, he's been placed in the tomb and it's now the third day and you got two of them walking on the road. It's just like if we were talking and we were talking about the events that happened mm -hmm. and we, we were just, you know, kind of sorrowful because, you know, Yahshua said something and as far as we're concerned, it didn't come to pass. So that's, that's the backstory. So go ahead and read. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Yahshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? So this is Yahshua. He's already raised from the dead. He hasn't yet ascended to the father, but he's raised from the dead and he's walking on the path with them and said, well, well, what you talking about? What's going on? What's this conversation you're having? Go ahead. And the one of them whose name was Cleopas answering said unto him, aren't thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Don't you it's know what's been happening? How are you gonna ask us what's, this the biggest news ever. <laughs> Go ahead. Dr. Lewis. Dr. And Lewis. has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Yahshua of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before Yahweh and all the people. Mm -hmm. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death. And, and have if you crucified. look over to the, to the death, burial, resurrection uh, plate, you see, you know, the angel there and Yahshua standing there. It's, you know, that's what happened. Yahshua the Messiah was raised from the dead. He's resurrected. So go ahead, Dr. Dr. Nelson. And have crucified him. Mm -hmm, they killed but we, him. Mm -hmm. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Now stop, stop. They said we trusted that it was him. But see, Yahweh knows you. You can say anything you want to say. Yahweh knows your heart. If you trusted, you wouldn't be so sorrowful because you would know if he said he's going to raise the Thursday, third day, that's what he's going to do. But see, they're sorrowful. They said we trusted it like it's past tense, like, oh, now they're trust. Oh, my, my, I don't know what to do now. Well, remember, the Holy Spirit wasn't poured out yet. So mm -hmm. they were not really sure. That's why they said we trusted it. We, you know, oh my goodness, we don't know. We, we, he said he was coming back. Now he's not, he didn't come back. Go ahead, keep reading. And beside all this, today is the third day since mm -hmm. these things were done. Mm -hmm. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when mm -hmm. they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Mm -hmm. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Mm -hmm. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Pause. So he's telling them, you, you know, and, it, and the way that's read, and I, I hate to, you know, I can't say I hate that because Yahweh gave that to me to be, but. I read the way I read sentences, I read them and I hear people say, oh, fools and slow of heart to believe. But what he's saying is, oh, fools. And you're so slow of heart to believe. So what he's saying is, didn't, don't you believe what the prophet said? Mm -hmm. don't, did, you, did you believe it or did you not believe it? You're, you're, your heart is slow. And that's, I say that to my girls sometimes, I'm quick with the slow. They'll say something smart and I don't pick up for it. I don't pick it up till like two days later. So they're like, oh, you fools and slow of heart to believe. You said you believed me when you saw me in the flesh, but now that I'm gone and I didn't come when you thought I came, even though he did, now you don't believe it. That's the slow of heart. So keep going, Dr. Yeah. Nelson. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and mm -hmm. to enter into his glory. Mm -hmm. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Pause. So that's where I started my dissertation is talking about how Yahshua the Messiah himself went back to the law and the prophets or what the world calls the Old Testament and showed them he went in great detail because it says she said he expounded unto them. He went into great detail how the law and the prophets are talking about him. 
not us, not cute little stories for us to read to feel good about ourselves, but every single thing in there is testifying to Yahshua the Messiah coming in, being crucified, being buried, being raised again the third day, ascending to his father, pouring out his Holy Spirit so that we no longer have to worry about all the laws and ordinances that were under that Old Testament. All we have to do is believe. Believe what? A lie? No, because remember, right in the middle of believe, there's a lie. That's when I start out saying, don't just be listening to news or looking at a story on Facebook and thinking it's real. You get some proof. You want to believe and you want to have a knowledge of what you're believing in. You come, come to me with an argument or a conspiracy theory, I'm going to take you on the carpet and go, where'd you get that from? What's the source? Who said it? How many times was it proven? Don't come to me with that mess. See, this is, yeah, this is what Yahweh gave us. He gave us his spirit to prove all things. He didn't say some things are just the gospel. He said prove all things. Why? Because it's, it's edification to you. So when you go back in the law and the prophets and you start seeing the things that he, he talked about and how he fulfilled them, and the biggest one we talk about, if you get the Moses chart really quick and I'll be done. <coughs> The biggest thing he talked about is that that that, that uh, Paschal lamb that was slain right before Passover. So here you have the children of Israel in Egypt. They've already had nine devastating plagues poured out in Egypt. And Moses tells them, okay, we're going to get out of here. But the last thing you got to do is kill a lamb. It has to be a male lamb, a lamb of the first year without spot and blemish. Now, if you think about how many people got poured out of Egypt or were resurrected or delivered out of Egypt, how in the heck they gonna all find a male lamb of the first year without spot and blemish? That's impossible. Well, once again, that's Yahweh's super word. You say impossible, poof, there he is. He's Mr. Impossible. So all of them had to get that lamb and they had to kill it. They had to, they had to kill that lamb. They had to roast it. And then they had to take that blood and put it on the four corners of the, the three corners of the door and dip it in the basin at the bottom. That made four points of blood. So here you got Yahshua the Messiah, who and you, all you got to do is look right over to the right. You see those four points of blood. You got two in his hands, one in his feet, and a, th a crown of thorns on his head. And they pierced that lamb in the side, and out came blood and water. That's your blood, water, spirit. And then when you look at that tabernacle pattern, thank you, I see the bell. When you look at that tabernacle pattern, you see that they, um, <coughs> when they killed that lamb, excuse me, when they killed that lamb, you see where it says about right there in the court roundabout? They killed that lamb on the left side of the court roundabout, right where Yahshua was pierced in the side. See, so even things like that that you think are insignificant, Yahshua the Messiah fulfilled that. So that, that lamb was killed on the, on the left side, right where that about is. And if this blood was drained, it was buried in that water, it was cleaned, it was cut up and it was put on that altar and it was roasted. They roasted Yahshua. They said, if you be the son of man, you come down off that cross. Well, that's not why he was doing it to save himself. He did it to save us. So what Yahshua was telling those men on, on that road, he was telling them all these events that happened and how they point to him. So why? So that they can have proof and evidence and not go around being stupid and not have any kind of evidence of who Yahshua the Messiah is. See, and that's what he gives us. He gave us the law and the prophets to look back at, to prove that he is definitely the son of Yahweh Elohim or Yahweh himself, and that he came in to take away the sins of the world, or he, not to take away, he did take away the sins of the world. All we have to do is believe it. And once you get that belief, once you, Yahweh gives you that nice, good soul food that we're having today and other classes are having, then you got your confidence. You don't, you're not scared. As Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Then you got your confidence. You can walk boldly. Then you start looking at everything like I do. I'm like, well, how, wait a minute. How, you know, the newscaster may have said something, somebody I love. I love Lester Holt, but I don't believe nothing he says. I still research what he says on TV. Why? Because I have the confidence of Yahweh to know that Yahweh is going to show me the truth because there's a love of the truth in me. And that love is Yahshua the Messiah. So, right. you know, just, just stay, stay mindful that everything, not just class, you prove everything. Don't just suck up this. And that's what Yahweh is showing me. People are so lazy. They don't want to look for themselves. They see a story on Facebook or whatever, and they run with it instead of, wait a minute, that kind of, does that fit the pattern? It doesn't. 
ask Yahweh to give you that desire to want to know the truth about everything, because that's what he's doing with this COVID. He's exposing everything. And we as the sons, we have more obligation than anybody else to want to know the truth about everything, no matter how much it may hurt or how much it may knock us off our soapbox. You ask Yahweh to let you have a desire to only want to know the truth. And with that, I will say you, if you got anything out of it, <coughs> excuse me, give all your honor and glory to Yahshua the Messiah. And I'm going to say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, uh, Dr. Hamilton, for that beautiful lecture. It's been my pleasure to present the next speaker, also from the Southfield, Michigan class, Dr. Sharon Lewis. Dr. Lewis. I would like to say good, e good afternoon to everyone. And it's really a pleasure uh, to um, be in attendance once again to our online Zoom classes. I did enjoy the previous speaker uh, very much and the things that she did have to say. And I uh, too, am very grateful to be a partaker of this divine vision uh, given to the um, founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. Uh, I'm glad that I am, was chosen to be a recipient of this teaching and to understand the things that we do understand at this particular time because it is so necessary to understand something. Um, Isaiah, I used to always quote this scripture years ago. You can get it for me. Isaiah uh, 33 and 6. If someone can get that for me. Because it's necessary to know something for a surety. And like the previous speaker has said, we've been blessed so much to um, have received this divine teaching, which was given this vision was given to the founder of this school, Dr. Henry Clifford Kenley, in the state of Ohio in 1931. And Dr. Kenley stated that he did receive a divine vision from the creator himself. And again, we always repeat and say the same thing over and over again. He said, now don't believe me because I said I had a vision, but make me prove it. And what we come to understand after so many years of being in this school and being taught from the creator himself through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the teacher in this current dispensation of grace, this age that we're in. So if there's any truth that's being told, it's being told directly from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a name. The name is Yahshua. And this is what this teaching is predicated on, is that divine vision, which was given to a man and accompanied, and accompanied by a divine revelation. And this is something that Yahweh has always done. And for myself, I didn't know that until coming into one of these schools, that Yahweh always spoke through a man through a vision and that he gave men revelations about himself. There are scriptures to promote that. Um, Deuteronomy, I believe it is. Um, you can get that one for me and get me one other about Yahweh speaking through visions, Isaiah, because he has done that. And Yahweh, we come to understand change not. He repeats so that we won't get screwed up and confused in our mind. Something as simple as the sun repeating its operation and the planets repeat the rotation around the sun. It doesn't confuse us. We know the sun is gonna rise and the sun is gonna set. See, we know that it's a standard that Yahweh has set forth according to his purpose and his plan. And the chart that you're looking at is called the Moses chart. And you see over here on the left side of the chart, you see Moses and he's depicted being in um, elevation and he's seen a, or partaking the divine vision that Yahweh was giving him after leading the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. 
and he's called upon up on the upper part of the mount. And you see Moses, or you see Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu on, on the lower part, and then you see the children of Israel, 70 elders rather, even lower. So Moses was called up, that's in Exodus, the 24th chapter, then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders. And this is what Dr. Kenley said he saw, but this is in your Bible. So what he's seen is the Bible in pictorial form being illustrated, and he's given an understanding about what it is that he's seen. And they've seen Yahweh Elohim in shape and form. Then on the right side of the chart, you see panoramic vision of Elohim to John, AD 96. So Moses was given a vision. John was given a vision on the Isle of Patmos. Moses saw the vision or the creation from the beginning to the end. And John on the Isle of Patmos saw it from the end to the beginning. You see, Yahweh even told John, you don't have to write the thing again, what he saw because Moses had already wrote it. So there's a lot of mysteries that are explained through by the vision that Dr. Kenley had. Now, Dr. Kenley, he says that he, his vision con consisted of the same thing Moses saw and what John, but he saw a panoramic. He saw it from the beginning to the ending, you know, the whole scope. He says it opened up like a Japanese fan and he was told unspeakable things and he was told mysteries that were being revealed, you see, directly from Yahweh. Before I go further, let me just clarify what I just said a bit with one of those scriptures. Please read. Um, that's Numbers. Go ahead. Numbers 12 and 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Mm -hmm. So this is Yahweh in the beginning here. He's talking about that. He's going to make himself known in a vision. Over in Habakkuk, I believe, is talks about write the vision and make it plain upon tables. And we used to always refer to our elementary chart when we show the different stories of the Bible and that they were displayed out on tables, if you would, in a threefold manner, you see those historical Bible stories, you see? So write the vision and make it plain upon tables that whoever read it may understand it. I'm paraphrasing and, and you see? So he talked about a vision and Dr. Kinley comes along and he says that he, if you can get for me over there in Revelations and I apologize now, I'm pretty bad with scriptures where that seventh angel is speaking. I don't know if it's the 10th and go back to the Moses chart. I don't know if it's Revelations where it talks about the, that seventh and angel four. being to sign, sound. Yes, go ahead and read. Because Dr. Kenley is looking at this vision and he's, been, he's seen and you're seeing what Moses is seeing and what John on the Isle of Patmos has seen. He comes in saying that his vision encompasses both of those vision. Now, the thing about Dr. Kenley's vision is that it was, no, it was not mm -hmm. different from what Moses saw, and it wasn't different from what John on the Isle of Patmos saw, <clears throat> you see. Yahweh gave him the complete picture, panoramic. You know, he saw it all sizes, every angle, he saw it. So here's Dr. Kenley, and we understand, you know, when they talked about that one particular scripture I've just called for in Revelations, that this is what you can understand it from what he was saying. Go ahead and read that, please. That's Revelation, the 10th chapter. Okay. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his foot feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. Okay, stop for a moment. So if you're looking at this particular chart here, and this is how it was explained to us years ago, 
And it was something because I thought earlier today, Yahweh had me remember the formal things and to remember how we were taught and what it was that he shared. And I'm here to tell you people, this thing is awesome. The very fact that you and I can say we see the explanations that Yahweh has given, the revelations of the secret things that the world don't know. It's a blessing. We are in the right place. And let me just add this too. The things that we do know, they're going to be our stability. They're gonna be our force, our rock, our shield. Because there will, we're, we're fastly approaching the time. We're really here already. There's nothing else we can depend on, nothing. Mm -hmm. So continue reading. This is Dr. Kenley now, you know, this is how it was explained. He's looking at the vision. He's partaking of that self same vision that Moses and John saw. So he says that he had his right foot on the sea. Is that correct? Go ahead and read. And he had in his hand a little book open and he said it's right foot upon the sea. The right foot, I'm sorry, I'm gonna pause you from time to time because I wanna emphasize this. The right foot upon the sea. Now look on the right side of this Moses chart. There's John on the Isle of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. So that's like Dr. Kenley's facing this chart. That angel and his right foot is upon the sea, read. Excuse me. And his left foot on the earth. And his left foot is on the earth. That's likened to Moses who laid his body down when he was called up into the mountain. Yahweh said, he said he didn't have any need for that physical body. That's what he said, so said that's what, how Dr. Kenley explained it. But it was what was in that man. He had elevated him and he laid his body down on that left or in the land, if you would. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now he explained that that was the seven days of creation. Mm -hmm. You see, now he's partaking this and Yahweh was showing Moses the seven days of creation. And um, not only that, he saw it all the way to the end people. Right. That's what we were told. Moses saw this whole thing, whole thing. John did too. Yahweh had a purpose, he had a beginning and he had an ending, and he showed it to his son. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from he heaven saying unto me, fill up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. And, and the write angel them not because they were already written. Moses had already written. Right. the seven days of creation. Go ahead and read. This is John talking, read. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein. And Dr. That Kennedy there declared these things that he had heard from Yahweh. And he said, what again now? And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, mm -hmm. who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Mm -hmm. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Yahweh should be finished mm -hmm. as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. Mm -hmm. So there he have in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Yahweh shall be finished. And so in 1931, Dr. Kenley had this vision and he sounded it. And he told those things that were unspeakable and unknown to man. See those mysteries as it talks about over there in Colossians, 
mysteries which has been hidden from ages and generation, but now being revealed or manifest to his son, you see. And he came and told us at the end of this age, go to the most uh, ages and dispensation chart, please. this present kingdom age, you know, where, where we are right now, we're at the very end of this thing, you see, and it's called the fourth age, the present kingdom age. And he was given that vision, talking about Dr. Kenley, and, and told us of things to come, things that are, things that will happen. You see, he told us those things because now we're in a different time than what we were in the previous two ages, the antediluvian and the post-diluvian. We're now in the present kingdom age. And Yahweh is about ready to wrap this thing completely up. You see, uh, I think it was yesterday. No, maybe it was Thursday, Thursday or Friday. I believe it was Thursday. Um, I was listening to the news. And in one day, I heard there was a volcano happening in the Caribbean. There were 34 earthquakes in Hawaii. Texas had an earthquake. This was in one day on the news. Four earthquakes in Texas. They also mentioned that the United States drinking water infrastructure is in major jeopardy. There's a major pandemic that's going on that won't go away. There are variants of that pandemic who the National World, I think it is World Health Organization has warned that a global surge of COVID cases is happening and death. So restrictions were eased. This is just a climate I'm just giving you, just something to think about in this present kingdom age. This is where we're at. You see, the variants it's all within Yahweh's purpose. You let you let, letting your guards down, easing restrictions. We can apply all those things spiritually right now. Oh, we're at home. We don't have to go to class. We don't have to study. Nobody sees me. Nobody's saying, where have you been? You're not coming to class, you see? And all these variants, we've seen variants in this teaching, in this gospel from the time it was presented. That's right. We know when it came, this is nothing, this is nothing that, you know, say, oh, don't speak about it. It's happening. Yahweh has showed it. So why, why, my goodness, COVID was bad enough. Why does it have to be a variant? Because mm -hmm. it was a variant spiritually. Mm -hmm. And if you look up the word variant, somebody can look it up. You read it. It's not just coming out of my word, but this is my, my mouth. But this is what Yahweh is showing me. This is the climate. And I think the other day, one of the speakers mentioned about uh, the textbook had that section read when Dr. Kennedy said the inevitable destruction in the preface of the, of the textbook. And he was talking about a time, the book was written back in late 60s, I believe, early 70s, but yet it sounds just like today. Mm -hmm. You say you have variant. I have variant. Okay. Yeah, that's variant on Merriam Webster Dictionary online. Mm -hmm. Manifesting variety, deviation, or disagreement. Mm -hmm. A deviation. Mm -hmm. Va varying usually slightly from the standard form. Varying from a standard. Mm -hmm. See, a standard or a pattern, mm -hmm. what Yahweh has set in motion. See, this gospel went many different, it had variants, various variants. And we know that for a truth, for a truth. A deviation, mm -hmm. slight difference is another uh, word for it. You know, makes me think of Satan in the garden. You won't surely die. Well, that's a little slight difference. Mm -hmm. So you had a variance of what thus said Yahweh, you see. So we have to see principles. That's all I'm saying. I'm not a doomsday preacher. I'm not saying that. Oh, woe is us. People, we got our way out. 
That's the part that's so wonderful to me. We have a way out. Yahweh has not left his son. And I want someone to just get for me the pamphlet, Preaching or Teaching in the Name. I read this briefly and it just, this was uh, last week sometime, I think, or maybe almost two weeks, and it caught my attention. And it was just so pretty to me. So it's just, I don't want you to read all of it. Start on page one, if you can get that for me. But just a second. I'm okay, that's up. fine. And, uh, but it's a lot of things that we see, but there's a lot of things that we have right now in this climate mm -hmm. that we can, you know, hang our hat on, take to the bank grit our, put our, sink our teeth in, be firm and stable. You know, that's, we aren't, we're, we shouldn't be sad. Yeah. We see the things and we understand them. But my first scripture that I had you, uh, to, I called out Isaiah 33 and six, if someone else has that quickly, just to start this point off. And I won't be long. I'm just going to bring this out just shared. I'm not bringing out nothing that hasn't already been brought out in the pamphlet, you know, but it was just powerful to me. Uh, Isaiah 33 and 6. Yes, it's Isaiah 33 and 6. Uh -huh. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stabil stability of thy times. Now, this is the prophet Isaiah. There's going to come a time that it's not going to be how many guns you have. Mm -hmm. which is totally out of control. It's not going to be substances, you know, that you can, you know, inject or inhale or do anything to take your mind away from something. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be a pill that the doctor can give you because you have panic attacks, mm -hmm. you know, anxiety, anxiousness in this world. Everyone is experiencing it now. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be the ability to call on another person. What Yahweh's got us right now, as the previous speaker has said, the brethren who have the self-same understanding, he's is ministering angels. That's right. That's what you are to one another. That's what we are. I'll call a brethren, and I want a brethren to call me if I'm down. I'm low. Yahweh had to be ministered. Yahshua and Messiah himself. So it's nothing wrong with that. And he gave us his self same mind and heart, whereas we can do it in today's time, because that's what's going to stabilize us. Oh, I forgot. Thank you for calling me, we'll say, you know, say one to another. I was so low, and then you start preaching the gospel. I'm telling you, this is what this preaching and teaching the name is something to this. Right. You're talking about having a method to mm -hmm. reinforce. You're talking about a vaccine mm -hmm. that will cause you to endure and withstand those germs. That's this gospel. That's right. We got it at our fingertips, underneath our mantles, mm -hmm. on, in our old dusty bookcases. Right. We've got the information that Yahweh has given us. And then foremost he it better be in us That's so right. that if the dust of the bookcase no longer exists and i can't this the the satellites in space can no longer get have a cell phone connection you know that i got something in me that's this right. the thing you call on that minister that preaching that ministering angel in you that's right that's what this is coming to people it's as simple as that. And so I'm not trying to say nothing no different than what we've heard. Right. It's the writing is on the wall. <laughs> it really is. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you in one day, the things of the world that's going on, all the hurricanes and volcan volcanoes and whatever. So let's just start here. Read that one scripture for me, please. Isaiah 33 and 6. Did you read that? Uh, um, and wisdom, that's Isaiah 33 and 6, mm -hmm. and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So there will be a time, mm -hmm. wisdom and knowledge, what you know. I know Yahweh is my savior. 
start reading, preaching or teaching in the name. And you can mm -hmm. read starting on page one. And you can go down at the bottom. I don't think I, you know, I need to start at the very top of it. Um, Mm -hmm. So, and let them, let them uh, you can let them know what you're reading. This is, you saw the preaching and teaching of the name. It's the pamphlet. Yeah, yeah correct. Okay. The pamphlet name is Preaching and Teaching in the Name. And this is page one, which is past all of the uh, introduction of the name. Okay, you can go ahead and start at the front first. I don't know how much time. I'm not going to be that much longer anyhow. But start you at the You want to go top. up? Yeah, I'll just start where you are. No, no, at the okay. beginning. Page one. Okay. All right. That's page one. Preaching or teaching, <clears throat> excuse me, in the name. The organized Christian world has always erroneously concluded that anyone who called himself preaching or teaching in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had only to mention, quote, or recite some passage of the Bible using the names of Jehovah or Jesus Christ or the titles, Lord, God, or Adonai. If the one who did this raised his voice in a thunderous delivery and moved about, waving his arms, they called this preaching. If his tonal articulation was more subdued and conducive to taking a nap with little or no body movement, they called this teaching. However, true teaching is preaching. Nevertheless, they missed the boat on two counts. Firstly, they were using the wrong name. Now that's Peace number purpose. one. That's number one. That's number one. And we had, when I was coming up, you know, I did the, I, I actually thought that. Uh, I didn't necessarily call it teaching or preaching, but it was like, he's really preaching if he is screaming at the top of his voice and moaning and groaning, then he's really preaching. And then when he's teaching was more of the subdued, like uh, Catholic, but we went to um, holiness church and then we went to uh, Episcopal church. So those were the two contrasts that I had. One was preaching, the other one was like a teaching and they're just talking very mildly and calmly, you see. But nevertheless, both sides was using the wrong name. So neither one of them was preaching, not true preaching, nor true teaching. That's right. You see, neither one. And didn't know that. I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. I was just going to two different churches, trying to satisfy that spiritual need, you see, then Yahweh call. But continue to go ahead and read. Nevertheless, they missed the boat on two counts. Mm -hmm. Firstly, they were using the wrong name. See, preface. And secondly... As the apostle saw, and in 1 Timothy 3 and 5, having a form of worship of Yahweh, but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no power in the names of Jehovah or Jesus Christ. Stop. No more. I'm sorry. See, it's very important. When I was reading this pamphlet, I'm like, he did not mince words. That's right. There is absolutely no power in the names of Jehovah or Jesus Christ. And those were the two. I, I stopped an older guy, want, wanted to praise God to me on the street as I was loading up my car. And when he said it, and I was so taken back with his word, well, Jesus is good. And I said, I stopped, I turned around and I'm like, yes, he is. And then I continued packing. And then I went back to him, I says, but let me tell you the true or the correct name of who you call Jesus Christ. Do you know that his name is Yahshua? He said, what, what? I says, his, the, the name of the creator is Yahweh and the name of the one that manifests in the flesh is Yahshua, not Jesus. He said, are you Jehovah witness? <laughs> and I thought, no, I'm not Jehovah. See, that's all they would know then, Jehovah or Jesus Christ. Mm. You see, but there is absolutely no power in those names. Now we're talking about a powerful Elohim. We talking about somebody who will who needs to who we want to deliver us in this time. And if there's no power in those names, why are we using them? Why is the world using them? 
You see how important it is to have the right one? Go ahead and read. There is absolutely no power in the names of Jehovah or Jesus Christ, no more so than in the names of Moloch or Nebu, uh, which were idol gods. Some would vigorously contest this statement, alleging and swearing that they know that they have gotten results using the names of Jehovah, Jesus Christ, or the titles Lord or God or Adonai. Stop. They have. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you again because I want to just make this point. This is a testimony that Yahweh brought out, made me remember. So some would vigorously contest the statement, alleging and swearing that they know that they've gotten results using the names of Jehovah or Jesus Christ. I can raise my hand. I got results using Jesus Christ. That happened to me being baptized and saved, I would pray in Jesus Christ and ask for this, that, or the other. And I felt I had results. But he goes on to say, why? Go ahead and read. Some would vigorously contest this statement, alleging and swearing that they know that they have gotten results using the names of Jehovah, right. Jesus Christ, or the titles, Lord, or God, or Adonai, but they have not taken into consideration that the almighty Yahweh is conscious mm -hmm. of their ignorance and stupidity, and that he has literally winked at this ignorance mm -hmm. at 17 and 30. However, once they have been told that the true names are Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah, and the true title is Elohim, that there is no more forgiveness for this error. Now you see how Yahweh said that. Mm, he's winked at our ignorance. Mm. Now, once you have been told and it has been proven to you, no J, no Jesus could not have been a J back there, could not have been a J sound. You see, you breathe the name of Yahweh. You see, all of the things in the, that he has proven to us. Now, there's no more forgiveness of this era, just to, just to repeatedly be disobedient and say, well, I know you call it, you call them what you call them and I call them what I call them. I'm going to keep using Jesus, but know that the name is not Jesus. That's why I'm telling you, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. See, confess to that which you know, you're bound by what you know. And he says, there's just no more forgiveness of this error. Now go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. True preaching and teaching in the name Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah is performed by one employing the correct name. Okay, stop. And I'm sorry, Lauren. I'm going to stop no that because this is very important. I don't want to miss this. Now he's saying true preaching or teaching in the name of Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh and Yahshua the Messiah Right. True teaching or preaching is performed by one, go ahead and read. By one employing the correct name. First, if you're going to be a true preacher or teaching, you've got to use the correct names. Right. Other than that, it's false teaching. Mm -hmm. You have to use the correct names. Read. And having a profound knowledge of the divine purpose and plan of Yahweh according to the law and the prophets. Okay, stop again. Someone get for me Isaiah 46 and 9. See, we mm -hmm. want to find out what is a profound, how, how do I get this profound knowledge of Yahweh? What is his divine purpose and plan according to the law and to the prophets? And they say the next verse is the scriptures from Genesis through Malachi. So we have Isaiah 8 and 20, which is to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. So we have to go back to the way that Yahweh prescribed to learn something about him. The law being the first five books of the Bible, and then the prophets being the next group of, uh, of, uh, um, of scripture, which is from Malachi to, what is it, from... Um, uh, the law being um, 
the first five books, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Genesis, and Deuteronomy. Then the next is from Malachi until Joshua to Malachi. Joshua to Malachi. Joshua to Malachi. I'm sorry. That's the law. So we have to go according to that. You see, John 5 and 39 talks about you search the scripture mm-hmm. or in you, them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify me. Right. In the 24th chapter and the tw- uh, 25th verse uh, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Mm-hmm. You see, he's got all the scriptures there. First right. Corinthians, you know, these are the words I spoke to you while I was yet with you. I think it was, is, is first Corinthians. We look at the scripture and, and write them and read them. Cause that's, that's how we're coming into a knowledge of Yahweh. Not by the way we may have thought, read the old, the, the new Testament, read John, read this, read that. You don't even know what Yahweh's doing. You don't know what his purpose is, but somebody get Isaiah 46 and read that. That's Isaiah 46 and nine. Mm-hmm. Remember the former things of old. Now he talks about remember the formal things. That's why I was telling you, maybe he's been having me go back. What was it that, what was it that set me down and shut my mouth? Right. It was the way this teaching, this gospel was delivered and how it was preached to me. I did, I could not do nothing with it. It didn't have any room for my interjection. It was just food for the soul. And it was proof upon proof. So he's talking about, remember the formal things. Go ahead and read. Remember the former things of old. Mm -hmm. For I am Yahweh and there is none else. There's nobody else but Yahweh. Yahweh always existed and always will. He's the sum total of everything. I am Yahweh and there is none else. Read. I am Yahweh and there is none like me. Mm Mm-hmm declaring the end from the beginning. Only Yahweh can declare Mm -hmm. an end from the beginning. He's already determined it. Think about that. He already determined it. The beginning, the end right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying, we say right now we're at the end of this thing. You know, he's already determined this. Ain't none of this out of order. That's right. Everything that's going on mm-hmm. is according to Yahweh's purpose because he declared it right from the beginning. He declares a man's days right from the beginning. He comes in or he'll go out old. He goes out barely walking. He may not have tea. He has to eat different type of food. He can't just eat steak. He's back to the simple basic stuff. His hair is gray or no hair, he loses it. His skin begins to wrinkle. Now, did Mm -hmm. I describe a baby? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, babies got wrinkled skin, no teeth, no hair, have to eat basic, you know, milk. You see, he declared that in right from the beginning. That's right. You see, go ahead and read in the Mm -hmm. scripture. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. That's right saying my counsel shall stand and mm-hmm. I will do all my pleasure. That's right. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that mm-hmm. executeth my counsel from a far country. Mm-hmm. Yea, I have spoken it. This is what Yahweh said. I have spoken it, read. I will also bring it to pass. Yes. I have purposed it. He purposed it. This is I, all within his purpose. I will also do it. Yes. You see? So here he is. Again, go back, Lauren, to the very top of that page right there. The true preaching and teaching is done by one employing the correct names. Read. By one employing the correct names and having a profound knowledge of the divine purpose and plan of Yahweh, according to the law and the prophets. This means preaching the death, the burial, resurrection, ascension of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the types and shadows, allegories, metaphors, and similes, and and allergies found in the Bible from Genesis to Malachi, and using the divine pattern of the tabernacle to line up the blood, water, and spirit, which are the three witnesses in the earth. When the true gospel is preached in this fashion, 
Then okay. something is. I'm sorry. Then something is bound to happen. Now she just read a lot. True preaching means preaching the death, the burial, the resurrection. We right. must talk about Yahshua's death, burial, and the resurrection. Right. How he died, why he did it, and according to the scriptures. The ascension of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the types and the shadows, the allegories, metaphors, similes, analogy, an analogies found in the Bible. I talked to you about the law and the prophets. Genesis to Malachi, using the divine pattern, which was stipulated in everyone's Bible that I never mm -hmm. knew of until I stepped in one of these schools, showing forth how that pattern is a representation, showing forth the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, or Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua the Messiah. And when we use that divine pattern, if you can just show it briefly, when we use that divine pattern, then we're going to line up the blood, the water, and the spirit, you see, according to the scriptures. And see, we're lining it up because that's how this tabernacle is laid out. You know, it's showing forth the blood on the altar. You see, it's showing forth the brazen lava of water, and it shows forth that cup of holy anointing oil. Well, that, that showing forth that blood, that's Joshua's blood. The water is he was buried for us, according to the scripture. But he came in and he was and is the Holy Spirit. So that was representing Yahshua manifested in the flesh. See, when we talk about the death, burial, resurrection, when we look at this pattern, then we see the blood, water, spirit, it's the self same thing as death, burial, and resurrection. A death on the altar. The labor is a barrier cleaning that uh, sacrifice. And then the cup of holy anointing of the death, burial, and then there's a resurrection. You see? Because they had to kill those innocent sacrifices on the altar. They had to clean those sacrifices. And they were able to live another day because of those sacrifices. So that was their resurrection. So it's pointing to Yahshua the Messiah who came in and died. He was buried and he resurrected according to the scriptures. So that's what it said. We have, we have, we're obligated to preach it. It's not a matter of that we want it or not, but this is the true preaching. This is the true teaching. Go back to the pamphlet, please. So this he talks means, about, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lauren. This means preaching the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the types and shadows, allegories, metaphors, and similes, and analogies found in the Bible, from Genesis to Malachi and using the divine pattern of the tabernacle to line up the blood, water, and spirit, which are the three witnesses in the earth. Yes. When the true gospel is preached in this fashion, then something is bound to happen. <laughs> Some this, this is just amazing to me. What's going to happen? Mm -hmm. Great. Some power is bound to be manifested. That is, some genuine faith is established. As the Apostle Saul wrote, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Yahweh. So stop there. So he's stating here that when the true gospel, because there is a false gospel or doctrine, but when the true gospel is preached in this fashion, employing the law and the prophets, showing forth the death, burial, the resurrection, the blood, water, the spirit, according to the scripture, then something's bound to happen. And they said some genuine power. That is, faith is being established. So that's how we get to getting to having this, um, uh, this uh, steadfastness, if you would, 
the stableness. See, faith is established. So once faith is established, now you believe in Yahweh. That's what happens to us. We begin to believe he has the power to overcome anything in us, you see? And that faith is being established by preaching the unadulterated gospel of, the, of Yahshua and Messiah. And we always talk about that to the law and to the prophets. Continue reading. As the apostle Saul wrote, faith cometh by hearing yes. and hearing by the word of Yahweh. This demonstration of the power of Yahweh has always followed utterances in mm -hmm. his name. When Moses saw the vision of the creation of the heavens and of the earth by the word of Yahweh, the super incorporeal form, in the phenomenal cloud atop Mount Sinai, he heard Yahweh Elohim speak of what he was about to do. And then Moses saw the sign follow. And he would see the power of Yahweh Elohim demonstrated by bringing into existence or manifestation that which he had previously spoken. The prophet David wrote, for he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. This is an example of what Yahweh Elohim or the Holy Spirit can bring about. Consequently, when the spirit is incarnated in a physical body, then there must be some demonstration of divine power to attest to the fact that it is the genuine Holy Spirit, Yahweh Elohim, therein. Otherwise, there will be no sign to follow and no demonstration of power. This is the way that one can tell a true prophet from a false prophet. Okay. So I just wanted that part read. And the pamphlet goes on to talk about the true prophets of Yahweh and how that Dr. Kenley was one of those true prophets that healed all manner of sicknesses, you see. So he was able to do that and it lists example after example. But the point that I really wanted to make is what I went over and that was the true preaching of this gospel is done by employing the true name of Yahweh, Elohim and Yahshua using this tabernacle pattern, using the um, ages and dispensation, using the chart and pattern on the plan of salvation, going through those Bible stories, showing forth the death, the burial, the resurrection. That's not, it's not like we're limited in what we talk about, but what we're talking about when we're utilizing the vision is what Yahweh used to, have, to bring you into an understanding of himself. So when you look at this chart on the pattern and plan of salvation, that's just what it is. It's like each one of these plates in these historical stories is listed in your Bible. Each one of them is showing for salvation, is showing forth hope in Yahshua the Messiah. That's the conclusion. It's showing forth his death, his burial, and his resurrection. See, in each one, we have the transgression, that was there in the very beginning, you know, and it was a death there because Adam and Eve partook of the fruit that was, they were told not to partake of. They were buried in condemnation and they had to be, we see that resurrection in simply because um, Eve was saved in childbearing. That was in the very beginning in transgression, showing the principles of death, burial, resurrection. We see Noah, the preparation entering into the ark. We see there was a death there because of the flood waters that came. They were buried in those waters and they resurrected on top of Mount Ararat in that ark, you see? So it was a death, a burial, the resurrection in the Noah preparation entering to the ark. The only way in, most, in um, the transgression plate, salvation occurred through childbearing because the lineage from Adam and Eve, Yahshua the Messiah was going to be born. And that is salvation. You see that? Noah, preparation entering the ark, salvation was that the eight souls that Yahweh said to be in the ark was saved. Everyone else in that then world were destroyed by the flood waters. You see, they were warned. They did not hear, adhere to it. They weren't in the ark. So therefore they were destroyed. Only Noah, his wife, 
his three sons and their, and their wives were saved. Only eight. Eight is representing new beginning. And that was a new beginning for a new world. There was a world at that time that ended, you see. Then you go over to Abraham and King Melchizedek. You see that principle of that historical story, if you will. And that's showing forth that Abraham and, and uh, Sarah could not conceive children. And Yahweh gave them child in the old age. So then he tells Abraham to offer up Isaac, his only child. And Abraham says, you know, I've got the wood and I got, uh, I, I've got, you know, where's the sacrifice? Yahweh says he's going to provide himself a sacrifice. So Abraham, when he told Abraham to take his only son up, Abraham psychologically and spiritually had Isaac dead, buried, and resurrected. And the only way he had him dead, buried, and resurrected in his mind was because Abraham already experienced a resurrection in that he and his wife, Sarah, could not have children and they bear Isaac in their old age. So it was a resurrection of Isaac from Sarah's dead womb. You see how Yahweh just solidified that faith and that belief. It was from something that he experienced already. So he willingly, or he obediently offered up Isaac without hesitation. Migratory pattern. Again, historical story. There's a prophetical, prophetic story in the Bible. You know, he told uh, Moses that, or Abraham, the seed would be down in a land that they knew not of and would be subject to bondage. And that's how they, they got down there by a process that Yahweh has set forth. And the children of Israel had to be delivered from the plague stricken Egypt. And just like that was that world, and I was just uh, reading something that Dr. Kinley has said. He said, Egypt was literally destroyed. So we, you know, we see there's an Egypt over there right now you can go to, but at that time it was literally destroyed, you know? So they had to take out that lamb, that's that death. Moses come down there, he's a type of a savior and Yahweh sends him down and to deliver the children of Israel after 430 years, you see with them by a mighty hand. And so they come through by taking out a lamb. They had to kill the lamb. They had to place the blood on the doors of their homes. They had to consume the lamb or bury it, you see? And then they resurrected out of that plague stricken Egypt, you see, walked through the uh, dry ground of the Red Sea. They resurrected, it was a death burial resurrection. Is showing forth that they had life. They had. They were saved. In other words, just like with Noah, just like with Abraham, just like Adam and Eve, they were saved. There was a process that Yahweh allowed salvation. You see. So then you see the next place interior of the pattern, and you see the altar. This pattern that was depicted in everyone's Bible, as I stated, and that altar there again was the place that the sacrifice that innocent sacrifice, which pointed to Yahshua and Messiah, had to be slain. So there was a death. And that sacrifice had to be washed in that brazen labor of water, you see. And then that priest there holding a cup of holy anointing oil, pointed to Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua and Messiah coming in, dying the death of an outcast dog, being buried, in Joseph's new tomb in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, and then resurrecting a quickening spirit, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You see, that's our resurrection. The next place is the baptism of ministry, which shows forth Yahweh, the lamb of Yahweh. He's that true lamb that was slain back there with Egypt. He's the true lamb the manifested in a physical body to die for you and I on the death as by the death of an outcast dog. They had to take his blood and nail it on the, to the, on that cross, you see, but that was his death. He was buried in the heart of the earth and he resurrected 
it shows forth him being baptized, baptized by John. That's another principle of barrier or water, you see. And then Yahshua Messiah is our Passover and he sacrificed for us, you see. All of, all of these stories, that's just the top part of the chart. And you have the bottom part of the chart. All of it is representative and telling the story of Yahshua the Messiah. Now I went through that briefly and we see it, we're familiar with it now, but people, I'm telling you, this is our bread. This is our salvation. This is our, um, this is our hope. This is what establishes faith for us because what it does is that I went through seven plates at the top across seven and then there's seven at the bottom there and every last one of them say the same thing. It shows forth his death, his burial, resurrection, a principle, an allegory, an analogy, you see a metaphor, that's what it's showing forth. And that's what Dr. Kinley was saying. That's how we come to a knowledge. That's the true preaching, using those examples, using those allegories. And you see it at the bottom as well. The story never changes. It's still either a death, burial, resurrection, 40 principle on and on at the top and at the bottom. And it's all pointing to a representative of Yahshua the Messiah and his story. Remember history? That's his story. That's all it is, is his story. Now, when we go through it, and we go through it being obedient the way he said it, with the intent in mind is to pass forth knowledge or an understanding to share what Yahweh gave us and how and what his purpose is. He came in to die. He came in to be buried. He came in to resurrect. He came in to save us. He did it right from the very beginning with Adam and Eve, Adam being of type a principle of Yahshua the Messiah, willingly, not willfully, willingly died for his bride. So therefore, Yahshua the Messiah, the book says the second man, Adam, so he came in to die for his bride, willingly. He willingly gave up his life on the cross. And it's through by preaching what he did or teaching what he did, employing the true names I'm preaching in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, not Jesus Christ, but in the name of Yahshua. Then some work is about to happen. Faith is established. That's power. And Dr. Kinley, or rather the scripture talks about that greater works than these shall you do. Yahshua the Messiah manifested in the flesh and he raised men from the dead. And he... Uh, told them their unexpressed thoughts and he appeared and disappeared in their midst. You see, he healed them of all manner of sicknesses. Dr. Kinley comes in as the true name, true preaching and teaching in the name pamphlet displays. When you go on, it talks about at the very end, all the things that he did, starting out, I think it is from 1944. He healed this one, healed that one, prophesied this, prophesied that. It's on and on because he was, was going to manifest. He was a true preacher because it talks about that the true preacher, if you're preaching and if you're truly sent from Yahweh, some power will be manifested. That's why Dr. Kinley was able to do those things. But let me tell you, he never took the credit himself. He always gave the credit to Yahweh Elohim, Yahshua the Messiah. So he says he could do nothing on his own. But now the scripture talks about, you would do a greater work. And I believe that's in this pamphlet as well. See, because not only did he healed from the physical standpoint, when the Messiah was walking in the flesh and raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus eventually had to die again, the physical body, what I'm talking about. But he says, you will preach this gospel. We that have the understanding of Yahshua will preach this gospel and raise a man from the dead, his soul, which will never die once you raise that man from the dead. When you raise someone 
to a knowledge and understanding. Not you, not me. I understand that. It's truly Yahshua that is doing the resurrecting. So you will raise a dead, sick conscience from the dead. What do you mean? No longer talking about Jesus is my savior. No longer, if you can go over there and I'll be finished with the um, carnal ordinances chart, no longer doing any of those things. No longer, and I, and I did see Lauren that you had that scripture. I hate jumping back and forth. Um, but in the pamphlet, if you wanna go right back to it where you were at the very bottom, yes. Uh, and read that, because this is what I was saying. Go ahead and read. There is no greater thing than this, and to have this happen is to demonstrate the genuine power of Yahweh. The emphasis in this present age or grace is not on physical healing, yes. but on healing the inner or spiritual man. And the Messiah said to his disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Couldn't have said it any better. Dr. Kenley said it exactly the way he wanted, greater works. So it's literally raising a man psychologically and spiritually from the dead. That's why our mission or our obligation is so important. That's the reason why Yahweh gave this for us to have that life eternal and to be able to share it with others. No longer doing those physical ways of worshiping. There is nothing we can do physically to worship our creator in spirit and in truth. All of the physical cardinal ordinances went to the cross with him. They were simply nailed to the cross. That's why he died, to fulfill all of those things. Another thing we didn't know nothing about and that this church world do not preach, that he came in to fulfill, which means to finish, complete, bring to a design end, not institute any of these physical cardinal ways of worshiping. See, he nailed them. He suffered that death. He was, it was placed upon him. He bore the sin of it all, although he was not sin itself. You see what I'm saying? And then he resurrected a quickening spirit, the New Testament written in our heart and mind. No more works, touch not, taste not, nothing. Just believing that Yahweh did it. And then when he gives you the understanding, of what he's done to each one of us sitting in one of these classes, giving us an understanding of his purpose and his plan. All he wants us to do is to repeat what he gave. Give what you receive. That's what he's telling me. Be obligated to sharing it to whomever you can, whenever you can. When he places it on the heart and mind, be obedient if you're sharing it to nobody but into your own heart and mind, your own consciousness. See, what? it's just so pretty. Remember the word hemisphere? I was looking at that chart when I was watching Springfield this morning, which was the green chart. And on that chart, it showed that hemisphere, that stick figure of the man. And they just had it there for a while. And I was just found myself looking at it intently. And when you look at that at the very top up there, and it has on their chart, they had the word hemisphere out there. And you see that arterial circle of Willis. That's like a stick figure of a man. And then it was that right and left half of that brain is called the hemisphere. And when you look at that word hemisphere, you, the spelling of it, H E. Um, I can't even yeah. think of it right now. <laughs> I got to write it down. H-E-M-I-S-P-H-E-R-E. -E. You can see he is here. So here's Yahshua the Messiah, not in that physical body that he came in to suffer the death, but on the day of Pentecost, he poured out that Holy Spirit into the heart's and into the mind. Right. So now you have to have this principle showing he's here mm -hmm. in your brain. That, that is such a mystery. We look everywhere outside, but he is here That's right. in our hearts, in our minds. And he's telling us now, ever presence, mm -hmm. the power that we desire 
to get through this physical bondage, if you will, is in us. The true preaching of the gospel at the instantaneous revelation of Yahshua and Messiah, we had heard Dr. Kennedy say, it, we're preaching the creation out. So it's not void. His word never returns void. We're preaching it out. And that which is in us at the instantaneous revelation will come forth and shine as the, uh, what is it, 10,000 sons? I can't remember how they would say, the spirit of Yahweh. You see, it will, it will rent this flesh. What do you mean by rent? It would just dissolve, dissipate this flesh. And that spiritual body, which is your soul, which is in, it's a body in you, <laughs> the real body, that physical that we're looking at is not the real. This is not the real. The inner man, your soul is the real. That cannot die. And the difference between you and I or should I say us and others that do not know Yahweh is at that moment of instantaneous revelation of Yahshua Messiah, those souls that have Yahshua's spirit will resurrect right along with him. See, we all resurrect together, those who have passed on out of this flesh and those who still have the flesh on we're going to rent this physical veil, those who still have the flesh, and we're going to all be spirit. Now, we're not the only ones resurrecting. Those without a knowledge of Yahshua the Messiah will resurrect also, because the flesh will be completely done away with. The difference will be, we will be in the light, they will be afar from the light or away from it, looking at it. Now, can you just imagine looking, seeing that they do not have the glory that you and I have? That's why people, this, the longevity that we're talking about is life eternal. How long is eternal? This physical has no, you can't hold a candle. Oh, well, the, 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 the prince over there, 99 years old, he lived a long, he lived way, way, way past the 70 years that Yahweh really gave man. But it doesn't matter, it's short. So he lived a long time. That's all a short time. It's a short time in comparison to eternal, That's right. eternity That's right. that you and I have a chance at. That's why it's so important. I see the five minute. We have a chance of this infinite glory. We have the opportunity. It is truly winning the lottery. You mm. can't say more about it. I am so grateful that Yahweh, with my stupidity, my nature, me sharing, had nothing to contribute to nothing that he just saw fit to say, you're here. We are blessed, we can't even put words to it. So my encouragement today, continue on. We, we got a job to do. And the, and, and the other uh, tra recent, another transcript I read, yeah, Dr. Kenley went through that person way in the back that don't know nothing and haven't uttered a word. He has a purpose. If Yahweh called him in this class, Every last one of us, not how much you know or not how much you say, it's none of that. It's having Yahweh in your heart and mind and recognizing and acknowledging him. When he, but when and if he do call on us to have anything to say, all you can say is hallelujah, because mm -hmm. Yahweh has given you something. Right. All we can say is hallelujah. Thank yeah. you, Yahweh, yeah. for this moment and this time in your purpose. Yeah. And I hope someone got something out of it. That's just my intent to just share what it is that was given me. That I have no pretense about it whatsoever. Yeah. It was freely given and I will freely give it 
that way as well. And that's mm -hmm. all of our hopes and our intent is to do. This gospel is not ours, but Yahweh gave it to us though, didn't he? He gave it to us mm -hmm. to have and to hold. I encourage everyone continue on in this fight. It's not that much longer. Just continue on, keep stepping, keep being mm -hmm. firm and keep trusting in Yahshua the Messiah with these words. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Dr. Lewis, for that wonderful lecture. Mm -hmm. Truly edifying, truly edifying class today. I'd like to thank all of our attendees in class today for uh, signing in and uh, having class with us today. Uh, as always, we hold classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays from uh, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on Sundays from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At this time, we're going to close class out with the last two verses from the Book of Jude. And when we all stand in your hearts and your minds. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present your fault, faultless before the presence of his glory. With exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, the Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belongs glory, majesty, dominion, and power, mm -hmm. both now and forever. Let us all say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.